Hello everyone. In the previous video, we learned about Fleming's left-hand rule, and we also saw how a conducting rod, an, a metallic rod, is placed under the um, under the magnetic effect and the electric current passing through it. And what happens to the rod? The rod shows movement because of the magnetic uh, field and the electric current. It has a force applied on it. It experiences a force applied on it. So the current carrying conductor. When it is placed in a magnetic field such that the direction of the current is perpendicular to the field. Okay. Therefore, what happens when when both of them are perpendicular to each other? Who, uh, which two things are perpendicular? The current flowing through it and the magnetic field. Both are perpendicular to each other. Each other, then the force is experienced. Now, if we do a little bit different thing, what is what do we, what do I mean by saying that if a current the conductor is moved in a magnetic field? or if the magnetic field is changing around the conductor what will happen so english physicist called as faraday it, in 1831 discovered how a moving magnet can be used to generate electric current and the current which was produced in such a manner was called as induced current why because here the electrons are not flowing in the conductor it's because of the movement of the magnetic effect that the current is being produced and the electric current starts moving therefore it is called as the induced current let's have a look into the activity to understand it further and then we'll go for the further topic here we have coiled up coiled uh, uh, n number of turns of a kind of a solenoid right and we have connected it to an instrument which is called as a galvanometer galvanometer is an instrument which will detect the presence of electric current but it will not measure the amount of the electric current it always indicates towards a zero okay if there is any current uh, uh, like effect experience then we will start showing deflection okay now we will be placing the magnet near this particular uh, conductor and we will see what happens so in the first step we are bringing the north pole okay and when it was coming inside the con in the galvanometer showed the deflection now it is not showing any deflection why because it is stationary the moment the magnet is moved away you can see the deflection right left deflection stationary zero then right deflection correct so what happened when the magnet has been brought near the deflection goes to the left side when it has been stay, stay placed stationary there is zero deflection when the magnet is pulled back the deflection goes to the right it indicates that there is change in the direction of the current which is being induced yeah now we will change the poles that means this till now we were placing the north pole now we'll bring down the south pole okay so north pole still we are checking it now we'll change the poles when we bring down the south pole you can see the deflection to be the right side as first and then the left side can you see the galvanometer moving right and when the magnet was placed inside it no deflection clear so this is how current is induced when the magnet is moved around the indicator sorry the electric current same way here we are taking the loop of n number of turns a uh, electronic uh, galvanometer is being placed and again we'll do the same experiment by moving the magnet inside the loop okay now can you see the galvanometer showing the reading it's zero movement negative then positive zero negative correct so why it was positive because it was too in from positive to negative the direction it was moving inside right then it became zero because it was, because it was stationary then it became when we were pulling it out when we, when we were pulling the magnet away it was showing a negative reading. correct so let's understand here so what was happening in the activity when the magnet was placed stationary inside the coil of conductor no deflection right when it was placed outside and stationary no deflection when it was being pulled towards the conductor there was a deflection when the uh, in our experiment when the north pole was brought towards it the deflection was towards the left when it was pulled away it was in the opposite direction right same thing they are saying when we move the south pole we did see that in the activity that when the poles were being changed initially it was north pole and then when we changed it to the south pole we saw the deflection of the galvanometer in the opposite direction right so when the coil and the magnet are stationary there is no deflection in the galvanometer Thus, motion of the magnet with respect to the coil produces an induced potential difference. 
and this sets up an induced electric current in the circuit. So galvanometer is an instrument which detects only the presence of the current. It doesn't measure the amount of current flowing. Please don't get mixed up with the ammeter. Ammeter actually measures the amount of current flowing, whereas galvanometer just tells us the presence of the current present. Okay, the pointer always remains at zero. And it till the current is not flowing. It can either detect the, it will either move towards the left or the right based on the direction of the current which is being detected by it. Right. Next is now we are taking a uh, example here. Sorry, the next experiment where we are not using a magnet but we are using a circuit wherein we are using a solenoid in coil one. With the coil one is a solenoid which is connected with the actual battery. We allow the current to flow through this. And we know that wherever there is a current flowing, there will be a magnetic field effect generated. So we'll under, we'll try to understand with an activity how this magnet, magnetic field which is generated by the current carrying conductor is going to affect the coil 2 which is placed next to it. And this coil 2 is connected with the galvanometer. There is no current flowing. So let's have a look. Now here in this activity, this is coil 1 which is which has been fixed stationary on the cardboard and it is connected to a battery source. Okay, this is the coil 2 in which we are not connecting the galvanometer but we have connected a LED small bulb. Now when the coil is being pulled, that is coil 2 is going to be gradually brought near coil 1, the bulb should glow. Let's see, is it glowing or not and how bright or how mild the glow, glow of the bulb is, that is what you have to observe. So now he is going to bring the coil. Okay, next to the coil 1. So gradually the coil 2 is being positioned in such a way that it's gradually been pulled near the coil 1 and the bulb is glowing. Right, so the magnetic effect field lines are more close, more stronger. So the bulb is glowing very strongly. When he's pulling it away, the magnetic field are begin to fade away. So the bulb will not glow. Right? So the closeness of the two coil indicates that the magnetic field lines are more stronger. So the bulb is glowing strongly or brighter to be more precise. And when it is pulled away, the magnetic field lines gets, gets weaker and weaker. So the bulb does not glow after a point. The potential difference is induced in coil 2 whenever electric current passes through the coil 1 changes. Coil 1 is called as primary coil, coil 2 is called as a secondary coil. As the current in the coil 1 changes, the magnetic field associated with it also changes. Thus, the magnetic field lines uh, across the coil 2 also changes which causes the induced current. So, what we are saying, as the current, amount of current is changed, how can we change it? By changing the battery source. If we keep changing, adding, uh, increase the amount of current in the coil 1, there will be change in the galvanometer reading or the bulb will start glowing brighter or we can do one thing is without changing the source of current in coil 1 we can keep moving the in coil 2 as we saw in the experiment okay so what is electromagnetic induction it is a process by which changing magnetic field in a conductor induces a, induces current in another conductor how can we do this process by changing the magnetic field either we move the coil in the magnetic field or we move the whole magnet around the coil either move the coil around the magnetic field or you move the magnetic field around the coil now the method to find the direction of the induced current is fleming's right hand rule so again the thumb shows the indicates the motion the first finger indicates the magnetic field line and the middle finger shows the induced current so in this in this picture if you see the no the uh, magnetic field is moving from north to south and the uh, coil is being moved, pulled upward. So your thumb should move, uh, we should indicate up, upward direction. The first finger should be indicating towards the monitor. The second middle finger should be towards the left. So that is what it is being shown by Fleming's right hand rule. To, to find the direction of the induced current, we use Fleming's right hand rule. Stretch the thumb, forefinger, middle finger of the right hand so that they are perpendicular to each other. The forefinger will always indicate the direction of the magnetic field. The thumb indicates the direction of the motion and middle finger indicates the direction of the induced current. Let's have a look how it is being used in the activity. As you can see here, the coil will be pulled outward. So this is the direction of the force. This is the direction of the current. And this is the direction of the magnetic line so middle finger current this is the force 
right so the thumb is the force the middle finger is the current because the current is going to flow like this that is the induced current and the first finger is the magnetic field so now you can see this is north and this is south so the current the magnetic field is going to go from bottom to top and the force is we are pulling it towards us so if you hold your right hand in such a way that the thumb is pointing towards you the first finger is pointing upward and the middle finger is towards the left hand side so that is what how we use the right hand Fleming's right hand rule to find out the direction of the induced current just as a quick recap what is electromagnetic induction it is a process by which we change the changing magnetic field is brought near a conductor or a current is induced by either moving the magnetic field near the coil or moving the coil near a magnetic field hope this is clear thank you